What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Wasted Attention Podcast this week. Uh, it's going to be a very special episode because we have a guest on our weekly podcast. It is Head Ned from the band Oakley Doakley. How you doing, Head Ned? Good. Howdy doodly. How are you doing? <laughs> we are excellent, man. Thank you so much for talking to us for a few minutes tonight. Yeah, absolutely. Now, I know you guys are obviously out on tour. Uh, tonight, you guys are out in Texas. Yep, we are in San Antonio tonight. Oh. We've played we've played three shows in Texas so far. We did Dallas, Austin, Houston, and tonight San Antonio. And Texas is great uh, unless you're looking for something small or to mess with. Uh, <laughs> then it's not so great. <laughs> but otherwise, yeah, it's been fun. That's awesome. Um, listen, I know that you have said this a million times before, but I think that our listeners would rather hear it from you. Can you give us like a brief little rundown of how this whole band idea got started? Yeah, so it really started as just a conversation between myself and uh, our original drummer, Blood Ned. Uh, we were mostly just kind of amusing ourselves, thinking like, what's the worst name for a death metal band? Uh, like, they step out on stage with pyrotechnics and huge, crazy explosions. Imagine, like, Rammstein or style or, or a metalocalypse type of thing. And they're like, hi, how's it going? We're standing your butt. Or how's it going? You know, we're, uh, we're the ruby red slippers or, or whatnot. And one of the names that we shot out there was Oakley Doakley, and then it went to, well, what if they're all dressed like Ned Flanders, and what if the all the songs are Ned Flanders quotes, and then it just kind of rolled out of uh, out of control from there, and, you know, it's been five years, we've toured around a whole lot, and it was, it was definitely a productive conversation. You know, it's, it's amazing how you guys have blown up absolutely from just a couple photos and four songs into this massive huge band being covered by all sorts of media from CNN to Fox. Obviously, we have to say Lord Supreme Fox. But, <laughs> but everybody out there has heard of you guys or has known something and you're embarking on these large tours. And obviously, you guys are going to be going over to the UK. And just today, I read that you guys are going over to Australia. Mm -hmm. So if you can yeah. Go ahead. Oh, yeah, yeah. Australia, UK... Um, U.S. tours and all that. Uh, we're touring in Australia with a band called Dr. Colossus, which is a Simpsons-themed doom metal band and probably the, the kind of most perfect opener that we could we could find on the planet. So, yeah, <laughs> we're, we're excited about all of it. Absolutely. And with going to Australia, I'm assuming that no one will be bringing bullfrogs along, correct? <laughs> Hopefully not. <laughs> I mean, we'll try. Exactly. I was talking to a drummer. He's planning on packing six of them, so I was going to try and get him to pack it down to like three or four. I mean, I need my seven, but we'll see. You know, I was so excited when I when I was doing my research, and I was like, oh, my God, these guys are going to Australia. I was like, how can I, like, reference a Dollary Do's reference or a Bullfrog reference <laughs> or, or the boot, you know? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, I read in an alternative press interview that you had done uh, about two years ago, you had said with the second record that you had basically confined yourself to watching the first 10 seasons of The Simpsons to get ideas. So it, I'm, obviously that's true because you said it. I hope that's true, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> now, without tarnishing the name of The Simpsons in any way, would you consider that seasons one through 10 are top tier for you? Yeah, I think, I mean... For me, I've every show that we go to is like a little kind of Simpsons fan convention, and there's definitely like uh, there's a lot of like Simpsons purists who claim that you know one through ten are the best, and there are some that go to twelve, and some that claim that season three through eight minus season five are. I've I've heard all all, <laughs> all tons of stuff there. Um, for me, I I even watch the stuff that, that's coming out today. Um, and some of the later seasons, I still enjoy it. And I think if it wasn't, if it wasn't like a thing, if people weren't kind of bringing that up so much, I don't know if I'd, I'd have an opinion either way. Um, but I do know that the seasons that usually right around like season two and kind of up to that six range, those were some of my favorites, the very like early, early seasons that were coming in there. Um, just off the bat, the episodes were so great. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so yeah, I think there is yeah definitely a, uh, a little bit of a, a swoop up and, and at least 
jokes and me laughing at them in, in some of those seasons. Oh, for sure. You know, and it's, it's one of the things that my wife had actually mentioned because we're also a very big Simpsons family household too. And growing up, watching those early episodes of The Simpsons, we didn't have DVR, we didn't have them on DVD, but for some reason we were able to still quote those like we've watched a million of them. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It just leaves such an impression on you. But now, with you know, you could just talk into your remote, and it's all there. And you could watch any episode you want. It's still, you know, I'm pushing 33, and technology still scares me. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's great. One of the first purchases that we made as like a band and getting you know band equipment with band funds was all of the existing DVD copies of The Simpsons so oh, that we could, uh, just for for research purposes. Absolutely, that's the most fun fun thing i could ever write off as a business expense that's awesome um now when you said with the shows being like mini simpson conventions i've you know seen interviews read interviews with you said that you've seen like a rod and todd in the pit <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah we've seen a rod and todd in the pit uh, we've had a side show bob um two nights ago we had a nedward flanders senior in the pit oh um God. Lousy beatnik. Uh, yeah, it was great. I got to chat with that guy like ahead of the show and whatnot, and we were just riffing on, you know, we've tried nothing and we're all out of ideas. <laughs> like, just bouncing back and forth with that, and I got a point, you know, during the show where I got to point at him and call him out. And oh, that's call awesome. Call him a lazy beatnik and <laughs> yeah, complain about the post office a little bit, too. Oh, absolutely. So, yeah. We got a lot of people come as, like, bonus Ned. Too, we'll have people who don the sweater and the and the polo and or or collared shirt or what whatever kind of works for it. Um, and yeah, it's always fun to see bonus meds out there. Oh, I can't imagine. Uh, any mods that wanted to come up to you in Diddley after the show? <laughs> no, we have had we did have a heavy metal mod that had like uh, like t shirts like embedded in her and these like wounds oh. around it and everything. <laughs> that was really brutal. That is amazing. It's you're you're sharing this craft that you guys have created, but yet you're connecting on such a different level with these deep track quotes and yeah, just blending these two forms together is amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, it's definitely very fun. You know, what I found to be interesting is is kind of going through your guys' catalog over these last couple of days and really just trying to come up with good questions. There, To me, there is such a difference on your vocal approach from Howdly Doodly to Howdly Toodly. It just seems on the second album that you kind of took that more darker approach, more growly than I maybe I noticed. Maybe it's something that I'm just picking up on. Did you approach the vocal style a little bit differently? Yeah, definitely. And I think a lot of it comes down to uh, when we did Howdly Doodly, the, the first record. I mean, I kind of started this band. Part of the reason we're like, yeah, let's do this is I I hadn't done any like metal screaming or metal bands before. I came from like alternative rock, like Weezer-y sounding, like B-sharps, you know, type of stuff, <laughs> folk bands. So this was a chance to like, all right, test the new new instrument, which was which was doing death growls. So I howdly doodly, uh, I I guess I wasn't as experienced. There wasn't as much experience in that one. So a lot of the growls remain kind of in that that middle range, and they're they're punchier. Uh, and as I have toured and screamed more, I've been able to get a little bit deeper. Um, and get like a little bit more like different shifts and pitch on there. And so that's why you hear how do we totally using those deeper, darker screams right. a lot more. Right. Um, obviously like, I know that you guys shot the, the video for re education. Is that a song that you guys play typically live? Yeah. Yeah. We usually actually kick off the crowd. We indicate that all of them are willingly or not going to be part of our little reen education program uh and yeah we'll, we'll kick off the show with that one most of the time oh that's absolutely fantastic there's so many subtle nods and it's it's very hard to remain professional in an in interview without seeming like oh my god totally fanboying but i really enjoyed in the interview <laughs> or not in the interview in the uh the music video how the apple cider reference was in there and it was only for that quick <laughs> cut I'm like, I see what you guys are doing. That was fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, if it's clear and yellow, you got a juice there, fellow. <laughs> Hanging around, you're in Cider Town. 
Yeah, that's one of my favorite bits. Uh, like building little slides for that, we were just filling it with little, you know, references and yeah. all that fun stuff. Like you said, it, it's probably some of the most fun research you could ever do in your life. <laughs> yeah, it's great. You know, um, obviously meeting the crowds and stuff too. You, you, from what you said, you, you really seem to be out there. So, do you guys kind of put yourself out there after the shows? Or are you, are you walking around talking to people? Or yeah, definitely. We usually hop out and go chat with people, and we'll take some pictures and whatnot. And mm-hmm. um, on this tour, we've been opening, so it's kind of nice. We'll end the show, and kind of while Max Avis is setting up and getting ready, we get a chance to to chat with some fans. And yeah, it's very cool. It's like you know, like I said, it's like a little mini Simpsons convention. You get to meet a lot of people who have this, you know, shared interest in. And the, the the wonderful animated TV show that brought us all together. Sure, absolutely. Um, with purple drapes, that is something that I mean I, I've heard it before, obviously. But what I wanted to ask you was that had to be like one of the like one of the things that you knew in the back of your head that eventually you were going to have to incorporate that into the band somehow. Am I right? Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah, that's one of the few that we actually pulled two references from the same episode. Mm-hmm. That's the episode where Marge sells Ned the house that is like obviously very haunted. Right. So uh, the song "Murder House" and "Purple Drapes" kind of both pull from that. But yeah, "Purple Drapes" is very fun. No, oh, it is absolutely fantastic. Um, <laughs> I just what what you guys are doing. It's so unique it's a fresh idea it's your own idea but you're paying homage to everything that has been respectful um in in interviews when you guys were coming up with this process have you ever thought about just taking on that personality as ned or is there like legal red tape with that or no it's always just been like uh basically the stage is the switch to go ned right. uh and then i don't know there's a lot of parts of just my own personality that are very just nedly already. Yeah. Uh, I worked in accounting before, you know, touring and whatnot. I, I am actually left-handed, so that, that helps too. <laughs> Damn, I can cross that question off the list. He's too good. This guy's too good. <laughs> <laughs> Um, you know, I, I, I know that you're busy. I've got two more questions for you. Uh, the first one is, is when obviously you do your research, you know, what kind of quotes that you're going to be throwing out there with the writing process. Are you coming to the rest of the guys with the quotes already in mind? Are you guys writing songs and developing them around the quotes? Kind of walk me through that. So usually all for both the records of actually, I, I write all the like rhythm guitar parts. Okay. Um, so I usually I'll sit down, I'll put together quotes. Um, I'll kind of come up, um, come up with, you know, the, the criteria is, uh, if a Ned quote sounds just very like dark out of context, then, uh-huh. uh, I put that or if it sounds the opposite, if it sounds just absolutely cheery and friendly, uh, and then I want to use that in, in a death metal song. Um, <laughs> so once I kind of have the quotes down, I'll just I'll sit there and, and kind of build the, the riffs and things on the guitar and connect those pieces, quotes with guitar parts, put together the structure with, with vocals and guitar, and then I'll bring it to the other Neds to kind of fully, fully flanders it out. That's fantastic. I mean, that's probably the most smartest bet. It seems most organic, at least, you know? Mm-hmm. All right. And with you guys getting ready to go on stage, the last question I want to leave you with here, and this is from my other partner, JD, which you can't hear right now because of technical difficulties, but this question credit goes to him. If we were ever on a tour with you guys, and let's say we were all obsessed with Chief Wiggum, if we named our band Wiggum Mortis, would that be stepping on your toes? <laughs> Maybe a little bit. Just a little bit? I think a little bit. <laughs> uh, but you know what? We're down. I mean, if you if you set it up, it's really hard to find openers that are like or or like bands to tour with that fit with the Flanders metal band. Yep, we've had we've been trying to like make up our own. We've had you know the uh, the you know bar scene band we're gonna do called Motown. Uh, <laughs> had that one. We've reached into other cartoons. We could do a King of the Hill band called uh, Propane and Discomfort. Oh, um, no. We've been thinking. We've got a Futurama band we're going to do. It's a Bender-based, it's Bite My Shiny Death Metal. Um, 
So yeah, we just need we're down for those ideas being activated upon because because we need some bands to tour with. Oh, that is fantastic, so. man! Oh my god, and you just mentioning King of the Hill just got me excited, man! Oh my. Yeah, we need part two and three on this. We'll, we'll need more and more time. But listen, Head Ned, thank you so much. Uh, we really appreciate your guys' time. Um, you guys need to stay safe out there. We're planning to come out and see you at the end of the month in uh, Dayton. We'll be making a little bit of a road trip from Chicago, but it definitely sounds like it's worth it, man. Yeah, it should be fun. Thanks so much, Animal. Awesome. It's been, been a pleasure care. chatting with you. Same here, man. Stay safe out there. All right. Thanks. Take care. You too. Bye. Bye-bye.